If you like this video, subscribe to my channel. Check out all my social media links in the description below. But let's get right to it. So last night on Netflix, the wife and I are scrolling around trying to find something to watch. And we come across this movie called The Last Thing He Wanted. And the reason we stopped on it was because it had uh, Ben Affleck in it. Um, it had Anne Hathaway and Willem Dafoe. And I thought, how can you go wrong with those three actors? Well... This was not a great movie. Was it a completely bad movie and a complete waste of time? No, it wasn't. But I did nod off twice watching the film. Now, this movie takes place in the 1980s, like 1984, 85, 86, something like that. It's during the Reagan administration. I think he was going, he was trying to be reelected at that point. Um, and it follows... Uh, all right, so this is very heavy in the whole um, Iran Contra, Sandinistans, drugs for for weapons scandal, CIA, blah 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 blah. It's based on a book, um, and it was released in January uh, of this year on Netflix, January twenty seventh to be exact. The brief description is uh, when she helps her father broker an arms deal, a reporter, and this is Anne Hathaway becomes involved in her own story she's trying to break. It was directed by D. Reese. Um, uh, and I look, I just have to say that Ben Affleck um, at this particular time, I think he might have an output deal with Netflix uh, because he had done that other one uh, action film uh, that came out earlier last year. And then uh, it looks like he's got this one. I have to say Anne Hathaway, she hasn't been working uh, uh, in, a, in a while. She's kind of taken a pause and, and doing her own thing for a while. Her performance in this was fantastic. Absolutely. And I have to say everybody's performance, including Willem Dafoe and Ben Affleck. Willem Dafoe plays, a, plays Anne Hathaway's father who basically sets her up on this uh, mission because she's very familiar with... Um, uh, 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 being down there. She was down there earlier in the film, in the beginning of the film with Rosie Perez, and they saw this massacre that they took pictures of in South America. Um, and they're trying to break this story. And Willem Dafoe plays her father, but, you know, he's got, like, dementia, Alzheimer's, so he's trying to send her on this mission, but he's giving her these clues but he's not giving her the full story because he can't remember the full story. So she's having to be a reporter and put this whole thing together. Ben Affleck plays uh, <coughs> head of the CIA or something like that. Um, uh, always going up in front of Senate committees and testifying and, and, and all that. Uh, like I said, Rosie Perez was in this. Um, uh, uh, Eddie Gathigi and Toby Jones were in it as well. Um, both Everybody did great. The problem for this movie for me was it was very long. Not in the length of the film, but how it was shot. Um, the color palette that was chosen. I grew up in the 80s. I don't remember seeing everything this saturated. Uh, everything was so saturated and made you feel like you were about to fall asleep. Like it was a summer afternoon uh, and everything was hazy and you just wanted to lay on the couch and nap. And that was the problem for the film with me. I nodded off twice. I just couldn't, although the story was riveting and, and Hathaway was amazing and Ben Affleck was amazing and Willem Dafoe is always amazing. The movie as, it's, as a whole just was like, <sighs> and I kind of blame that on the cinematography. I hate to throw people under the bus because there's probably about 250 people that worked on this thing. Um, whoever made the choice for the color palette killed the movie for me, I think. Um, it was also very hard to follow. Even the, and I, maybe if I read the book, I would have gotten a little bit more from this movie. Uh, and maybe with the book, it was probably a lot more like a Tom Clancy thing where there's like really beautiful detail that connect the dots. But in order to cram this into a movie, they just couldn't pull a Clancy with it. 
And it was just all over the place. You didn't know who was bad. You didn't know who was good. And maybe that was the point. But at the same time, I was just like, I felt like a ping pong, just <laughs> tennis match going back and forth, back and forth, trying to figure out what was going on with this movie. And in the end, spoiler alert, um, uh, uh, the way Anne Hathaway dies at the end, she gets double crossed uh, by Ben Affleck, who shoots her. And she falls off a cliff. The slow motion of her descent off the cliff until she finally hits the water as she's narrating as it goes down, how she was double crossed and how this whole thing, you know, after Ben Affleck had, you know, slept with her a couple times and and she thought she they, they, there was a thing there. And, you know, it, it's just uh, I could see why all these people were attracted to the film because they were like. This is really good material, but it was the execution that was just, oh, I wish they would have done a better job with it. Uh, you know, I, I'm looking at uh, the IMDb score gives it a four out of 10. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes gave it a six percent. Uh, um, uh, I, I mean, that's how I felt coming out of it. I felt coming out of it that it was just bleh. And um, so I don't know, man, like people put their heart and soul in this. If you want to give it a shot, maybe you'll see something different that I didn't see. Um, but for the most part, this movie is, is definitely a pass. For, it's a one-off. I'll never watch it again. Um, and, you know, this is just one of those deals where Netflix, you know, they put their money behind something, you know, they have an output deal with Ben Affleck. They got to crank out a few films with him. He jumps on this one. And again, I don't I don't understand how you have Anne Hathaway, Willem Dafoe, Rosie Perez, Ben Affleck. And this movie is just a, just really weak and rough to watch. I don't I don't know how you do that. As a filmmaker, I don't know. I don't know whether the editing style, somebody could have picked the pace a little bit fix things here, nipped and tucked it a little bit more. Um, I think the color correction, the choice for the color palette was awful. But that's just me. Somebody else may love it. I'm sure everybody sitting around making the decisions, you know, with the colorist were like, oh my God, this looks so good. It's going to be so moody. It's going to make people feel like they're in South America. You know, or coast, Costa Rica with the heat and the humidity and the sticky and the bombiness. But that makes you want to be on a vacation and, and fall asleep. And that's, again, that's that's what I got from this movie. Um, I got nothing else. If you want to watch, it's called The Last Thing He Wanted, which is a reference to what the dad wanted the daughter to do in the movie. Uh... I give this thing a uh I'm going to I'm going to go with the 3 because I like the 3 leads but that's about all I like about this movie. So out of a, a a 1 to 10 I give it a 3. The last thing he wanted on Netflix. Check it out. Buyer beware. And we'll see you on the next one. <laughs>